Most recent national polls show the gap between Trump and Biden slowly narrowing. But when looking at each state's specific polling, the former president has been making some waves where you might not expect. Today, we're going to take an in-depth look at every state's polling from 538 and see if there are signs of a sweeping red wave or just another campaign that'll crash and burn. So let's dive right in. Starting off with the states that will basically create each party's baseline, since they are pretty much guaranteed. These are the states that show heavily favored polling averages, as well as historical voting patterns that based on the data are unlikely to change. Right along the Pacific Coast is our first state, Oregon. Usually, we would start with Washington, but most recent polls show some pretty surprising results. More on that later. Oregon, based on four different polls with both Trump and Biden, show Biden pulling in a consistent 10 plus point margin over Trump. Given this data and just the fact that Oregon has been a very reliable blue state starts us off with our first solid Biden state. California, representing almost 40 million people and bringing 54 electoral votes to the election, the most out of any individual state, has 538 polling averages showing what most already expected. As of today, Biden carries a pretty significant lead over Trump of 20 points. Given California's polling and history, puts it under the umbrella of safe democratic states right next to Oregon. The next safe state is the Aloha state of Hawaii. This is another historically blue state that seems like it's not going to change this time around. When looking at the most recent poll with just Biden and Trump, the incumbent president is leading in the margin of 19 points. This changes when you include other third-party candidates like Kennedy, but that's a video for another day. Given the data from the head-to-head -head poll, as well as looking at how Hawaii has trended as a solid democratic state in the past, makes this another safe state for Biden. Moving further east is Illinois, the next safe blue state. Although most polls between just Trump and Biden are older due to not many expecting anything shocking, it's still good to check. Illinois, as of most recent polling, shows Biden almost consistently polling in the incumbent president's favor in margins of over 10 points. Also considering that it hasn't voted red since the 80s makes this a pretty safe blue state. The last group of solid blue states are on the east coast and starting us off over here is the empire state of New York. Despite earlier polling numbers than expected, especially given that Biden won this state by a margin of over 20 points in 2020, May's most recent poll shows Biden pulling in 19 more percentage points than Trump. Past polling also has margins of over 10 points for the incumbent and past elections have seen New York voting blue a majority of the time. Moving up into New England is the state of Vermont. Competition in this state is non-existent. So much so that for the limited numbers of polls taken, they show Biden winning in a consistent plus 30 margin over Trump. It's safe to say that this state will definitely go to Biden. Massachusetts shows a similar story with the most recent poll between Trump and Biden showing a 30-point margin in the incumbent's favor. I don't think this state will be red anytime soon, making it solid blue. In the state of Rhode Island, the margins aren't as high as they were in the last two states, but they still are enough to make any Trump supporter lose hope. Looking at these numbers make the state safe for Biden. In Connecticut, the numbers aren't as bad for Trump as they are in Vermont. Polling from Connecticut shows Biden almost always leading with over 10 points. It is also a state that, like most New England states, has been reliably Democrat-leaning. Keeping the polls and past voting in mind, we can add it to Biden's solid blue states. D.C. and the state of Maryland are up next. When we see what polling shows, it seems that Trump isn't very popular in either place, with him pretty far behind Biden. Maryland shows Biden pulling ahead usually in the 20 plus point margin and in DC it shows by far the worst numbers for Trump so far. 2020 polling averages from 538 show Biden getting an 85 point lead over the former president making both DC and Maryland solid blue. Delaware and Maine's first district are also considered safe democratic states mainly due to how they have voted in the past since 538 doesn't show many polls. In 2020, Biden won Delaware with 58.7% compared to Trump's 39.8%. And polls for the 1st District in Maine show Biden leading with an average of around 12 points. 
giving these both solid blue colors on the map wraps up Biden's safe states and puts the incumbent president over halfway to 270 with 155 electoral votes. Now let's see how many votes Trump is pretty much guaranteed this election. The isolated state of Alaska is the first state that Trump can count on, while previously considered a likely state. 538's most recent release polls makes me think that it'll be closer to a safe state since Trump has just pulled in the 23 and a 19 point margin over Biden. Alaska also hasn't voted Democrat since the 60s, which probably makes this state a solid red. Moving on to the mainland are the western states of Idaho, Utah, Wyoming, and Montana. All four of these states not only are considered to be some of the most Republican in the nation, with Wyoming being number one, but they also show super large margins in favor of Trump. In Idaho, we can see it averaging out at plus 29. Most recent polls in Utah show margins of plus 20 or more. With Wyoming's Trump's plus 53 in the one poll that was taken, I don't think there will be much of a contest there. And in Montana, Trump has pulled in plus 20 margins almost 100% of the time. Looking at this data, we can safely give all four states a solid red color on the map and give their collective 17 votes to Trump. North and South Dakota are the next couple of states we'll be looking at. Both of these states will be pretty much impossible to win for Biden when we look at how he polls against Trump. According to polls in both states, in the north the only polls shows plus 37 Trump and in the south there are a total of 3 polls with just Trump and Biden, all of which give the former president an over 20 point lead. These are also states that haven't voted blue since the 60s and looking at the data, it looks like that won't change anytime soon. Nebraska statewide, as well as its 1st and 3rd congressional districts, are heavily favored to vote for Trump. While there aren't many polls for its districts outside of the second one. More on that later. Its statewide polls shows Trump winning by margins of no less than 15, with the highest at plus 23. Being another one of the most conservative states in the country, this state can be labeled as a safe Trump state. Kansas and Oklahoma are our next pair of safe Trump states. But looking at polls, Oklahoma is the stronger of the two with Trump constantly pulling in margins of over 25 points. Kansas shows Trump winning with the average sitting somewhere around plus 13 or so and when we look back to 2020, both states didn't really favor Biden much. Because of this, we can make both states a solid red on the map. In Missouri, we can see pretty much the same thing with polling favoring Trump in margins averaging somewhere around plus 15. This is also a state that in 2020 voted for Trump with 56.8% compared to Biden's 41.4%, a difference of 15.4%. Without any indicators of a huge blue shift, Trump is almost guaranteed to get Missouri's votes, making it solid red on the map. As we move into the Deep South, most of these states not only have similar voting patterns and historical trends, but polling today seems to be very similar. This next group of states includes Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, and Kentucky. In Arkansas, Trump has been polling in a minimum of plus 25 against just Biden. In Louisiana, polling shows him getting around plus 15 every time. In the only poll with Trump versus Biden in Mississippi, Trump got plus 18. In Alabama, almost every poll but one has him getting over plus 20, and the one poll that doesn't, it sits at plus 19. Tennessee and Kentucky also show Trump polling with margins no less than plus 20 when pulled up against Biden. It's also important to note that when we look back to the last election cycle, all these states also voted for Trump in pretty safe margins. Given all this info, I think it's safe to say that these states not only won't be turning blue anytime soon, but also that this November, they'll probably be giving their votes to Trump. Next up is the state of Indiana. The average margin in the state when looking at polls between just Trump and Biden showed Trump pulling in a safe lead of plus 20. Indiana is also a state that voted for Trump not only in both of his elections, but also in margins that leave little wiggle room for any Democrats. Because of this, Indiana will be a safe Trump state for the foreseeable future. Our last two safe red states are West Virginia and South Carolina, as well as the 2nd Congressional Districts of Maine. 
West Virginia shows the former president getting plus 37 in 538's only recorded poll. And South Carolina shows Trump almost always getting plus 15 when polled up against Biden. Maine's 2nd District is also considered safe since its most recent poll shows Trump having a lead of plus 20 over Biden. Looking at all this data makes me think that these states are safe red states for Trump. Finishing off the safe states puts the current score at 155 to 126 with Biden in the lead. Moving on to the likely states this election. These are the states that aren't as solid as the safe states, but a flip of any of these would still be a major upset. Starting off the likely states is the state of Washington. A usual safe blue states I bumped down to just likely, mainly because of the fact that Trump just pulled ahead of Biden. The latest poll shows Trump plus 1 and plus 5 in the lead, which is very surprising to many since Washington has been such a reliable blue state for so long. But instead of outright giving it to Trump, all I will do is just bump it down to likely Biden because the last Republican to get its vote was in the 80s. Colorado and New Mexico are up next. These are another set of states that 538 doesn't have averages for, but when looking at polling, they both seem to show Biden leading in margins of at least more than 5 points. When you look at how they voted in 2020, with both voting Democrat in double digit or almost double digit margins, this makes me think they will end up being likely Democrat states this time around too. New Jersey is another state I've bumped down to likely, mainly due to recent polling. While still showing a clear advantage for Biden, New Jersey's historically blue numbers have been down recently, with 538's most recent polls showing margins of no more than plus 6. Surprising to say the least but given this data, it doesn't quite match up with the other safe states, making me label it as just a likely blue state this time around. The last likely Biden state is the state of New Hampshire. Polling here has been higher than what's been shown for New Jersey, but it's still not as safe as Democrats would want it to be. While the numbers can range from plus 3 to plus 10 when putting Trump and Biden head to head, New Hampshire hasn't voted red in over 20 years and since Biden won it in 2020 with plus 7.3, we're going to make this a likely blue state this time around. Adding the likely states to Biden's total put the incumbent president at exactly 200 electoral votes. Kicking off the list of likely Trump states is the South to the Lone Star state of Texas. Once thought to be shifting blue with Trump winning the state in 2020 with a margin of just 5.6%, down from his margin in 2016 of 9 points. Texas, this cycle, has been showing signs of growing Republican lead much like was expected of the state prior to the last election. According to most recent polls, Trump is leading Biden by 10.2 percentage points with 45.7% compared to 35.5%. Because of this, Texas' 40 votes can be added to Trump's total, putting him up to 166. Moving towards the Sunshine State of Florida, we see a similar trend to the one in Texas. Just four years ago, election night was heated in this state, with margins for the last few cycles being super close. Now Florida has switched out its former swing state title with that of a strong Republican one. Trump currently leads 9.6% over Biden with 46.3% compared to 36.7%. Because of this, we can label Florida as a likely red state and give its 30 votes to Trump. Moving further north are the states of Ohio and Iowa. Both show a promising Trump lead with Ohio showing plus 9.6 and the average of Iowa's four polls being about plus 11. Both states also voted for Trump in 2016 and 2020 making them likely states yet again this November. Adding up all the votes from the safe and likely states puts the score at 219 to 200 with Trump seizing the lead. Before we dive into the states that are by far the closest, let's fill in those closer lean states that aren't considered outright swing states. Minnesota is the first of these just lean states. Most recent polls from Minnesota tell a story much different to the one we see looking back the last 50 years. Independent, as well as Trump's sponsor polls, show not only him in the lead, but in the polls where Biden leads. The margins are pretty thin, but when we look at the past, specifically to the last election, where Biden won by a margin of 7.1, these Trump sponsor polls seem a little less reliable. Regardless though, we will put Minnesota as a lean blue state. 
Virginia is the last blue lean state, with most recent polls showing smaller margins than usual. You also have to take into account that a lot of these closer margins are Trump-sponsored, just like those in Minnesota. But taking them into account, as well as the fact that Biden won Virginia by 10.1% in 2020, makes this state a lean Democratic state this time around and pushes Biden back into the lead. Trump only has Nebraska's 2nd district, as well as the state of Maine, leaning in his favor, according to the most recent 538 polls. Polls from Omaha show Trump leading with plus 3, and for Maine's statewide contest, it seems like Biden's lead completely diminished from the plus 11 he had. Most recently, Maine as a state polled plus 6 in favor of Trump, shocking everybody and making the state lean red. With only 7 states remaining and 93 votes left in play, let's see who wins the 2024 election. Starting in the West with Nevada, as of most recent polling, Trump is leading 42.7%, a 6.8 margin over Biden with 36%, up a few points from just a few weeks ago thanks to New York Times slash Siena College's most recent polls, which show pretty substantial Trump leads. Given these numbers, as of right now, it's safe to say that Trump is favored to win back the state after losing it in 2020, with a lean red stance on the map. Just east of Nevada is the battleground state of Arizona. As of 538's most recent numbers, Trump leads Biden with 42.8% compared to 39.2%. This is another state that Trump barely lost in 2020 but is now favored to win back again when we look at the polling. With the former president's 3.6% lead, we can put Arizona as leaning towards the Republican Party. Georgia is the next swing state we'll be looking at. In 2020, it was one of the closest states of the entire election with Biden barely polling ahead just 0.3%. But thanks to Trump improving his polling this cycle, polling averages show this pretty close state following this redder trend that we are seeing in other battleground states. Current numbers show a 6.1 point lead for the former president, with the numbers being 44.5% Trump and only 38.4% Biden. With a clear red advantage, we can lean Georgia red, putting Trump up to 255 total votes. Just a little further north, we have North Carolina, one of the only swing states in the last two election cycles to stay loyal to Trump. As of today, Trump leads Biden plus 6.2 with 44.9% compared to 38.7%. With these numbers, it's safe to say that third time's a Trump for North Carolina, and it will probably vote for Trump for the third election in a row. For the map though, we will put it as a lean Republican state pushing Trump over that magical 270 vote mark at 271. Even though we project Trump already winning, let's see how the last three Rust Belt states poll to see just how close this election could actually be. Starting with Pennsylvania, this is the closest state we've looked at so far. Recent polling averages by 538 currently show Trump leading with just plus 1.8. The reflected numbers here are Biden with 41.1%, compared to Trump's 42.9%. While this is way too close to tell, especially since we are still months away from the election, as of today, we can give this state a tilt Republican stance. Moving on to Michigan. Michigan's numbers seem to pull even closer than Pennsylvania's with a difference of less than one percentage point. As of today, Trump has 41.6% compared to Biden's 40.8%, giving Trump a margin of just plus 0.8. When we look at the actual polls, it seems that it flips the leading candidate, with Trump leading in 6 out of the last 10 polls and Biden leading in just 4. These numbers are just too close to tell, just like with Pennsylvania, but with what we have right now, we can tilt Michigan to the Republicans. And finally our last state, Wisconsin. 538's polling average, as of today, shows Trump leading with barely 1 point with it currently at plus 1.2. The percentages are 41.8% Trump and 40.6% Biden. Usually, all three of these states tend to vote the same and polls are reflecting that as of right now. But it is still way too close to tell for any three of these states and we truly don't know who might win until November. Or we might know if there is a super huge shift in polling, which is unlikely. But with what we have now, we can tell Wisconsin Republican like its other northern swing state neighbors. With all 50 states accounted for, the final score is 315 to 223, with Trump winning another four years in office. 
and becoming the 47th President of the United States.